Victory in Jesus. Can we stand, please? Jesus. I like going back and, and watching the, uh, some games and highlights from 2004 when the Detroit Pistons won the championship. love watching it because I know who won. It doesn't matter how bad the game gets when I rewatch those. It doesn't matter how horrible it is, how ugly it is. I know at the end of the game they're going to win. And with the Christian life, we're still in the game. Mm -hmm. We're still living life, but victory is guaranteed. Because of Jesus. So thankful that there's victory in Jesus. So good to have you with us this morning. We're going to begin our service with a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Jeremy if he would to open our service, please. And after he's done praying, you may be seated. Holy Father, we praise you for that old story of how a Savior came from the Lord and the victory that has been secured for us through the sacrifice of God. We ask you to bless the service now. Speak to us from your word.
snow shovels. Nobody has, so we're still holding out hope that it's going to stay out a little bit longer. Uh, but thank you so much for being here this morning. I'm going to ask for a minute if they would to come. If this is your first time here, or first time in a long time, we thank you for joining us for the services today. Our men have a connection card that we'd like to get to you, and with that connection card is a pen. So if this is your first time here, just ask to raise your hand. They'll get one of these connection cards to you, and we ask that you fill that out, put that in the offering plate, uh, at the end of the service, uh, and uh, I've got uh, a commitment from from several young people. If you fill out that card, it's it's good for one free driveway shovel this year. <laughs> Phil, can we commit to that? No. Uh, Where's Gibson? Gibson, can we commit to that? One free. Oh, yeah. guys, uh, we're looking for willing hearts here. Come on now. Uh, uh, but thank you so much for being with us. Fill out that connection card if you would, please. Place that in the offering plate when it comes by a little, in a little while. And you can keep that pen as a reminder of your visit with us this morning. I'm going to ask if you would to please stand. And uh, let's go around and welcome one another this morning. And that's room place to reverse. Ladies first. Blessing there. Uh, Dave, are we counting down the days till we get on the ice? Uh, 
Okay, good. Well, there's no ice yet, so we got a little bit of time still. Uh, but uh, uh, winter uh, is coming. Uh, I did not see, I'm not a prophet or anything like that, but I do check the weather from time to time. Uh, and they claim to be prophets, but they're only good at it like 10% of the time, I think. Uh, it didn't look like there's any more snow in the forecast the next 10 days. So, uh, I don't know if we'll hold them to it or not, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but thank you for being here today. If you have your bulletins, we'll highlight a few of the uh, events that are coming up here at the church. And I'm excited about, excited about what, uh, what we've got going on. Don't forget this coming Saturday, uh, we have the trunk or treat here at the church. That will be at 6 o'clock. And so those of you who have signed up to have a... Uh, have your trunk entered into, into the decorating contest. Uh, I've asked you if you can be here by about 5.30 so we get up, put you in the right place, all that good stuff. And then don't forget to have a bunch of candy to pass out as well and to snack on from time to time uh, as well. So we're excited about that. Be uh, inviting those to come in contact with to, to come check us out for that trunk or treat. Uh, the, the trunk or treat in town, is, uh, they close theirs. And so I think we might be the only ones in town. So. Uh, and so I'm excited about that. Uh, we'll be giving gospel tracts out to everybody that comes in, so everybody will receive a clear presentation of the gospel, uh, and the kids will have a gospel tract as well. So I'm so excited about that. We'll have uh, the world's best popcorn is right here in Grayton, Michigan. We've got some Indiana Hoosiers here, but the world's best popcorn is here, okay? Pastor Barnett makes the greatest popcorn I think I've ever had. And so. We'll have some of that, so you be sure of that. Uh, if, if for any other reason you come and taste that popcorn, I mean, it's worth it. It's worth it. And so I'm excited about the popcorn, excited to get the gospel out of our community, uh, excited to see young people come as well. And so that'll be this Saturday from 6 to 8 o'clock. And then uh, the following day, Sunday, that's uh, time change. And so this is just your friendly reminder to set your clocks back an hour. Enjoy that hour of sleep that you lost in the spring. So you're getting it back uh, so you can enjoy that a little bit more. Uh, and then uh, also that Sunday, uh, we'll be taking up a change offering, and that'll go towards our, our building fund. And so uh, if you've got change you've been saving up, uh, now the next study is the time to give that. I've been trying to save mine, fighting the kids off, and trying to get at it, and uh, all that good stuff. But uh, uh, we'll have the change offering next Sunday as well. Uh, and then the following Sunday, Sunday, November 8th, we'll be recognizing uh, all of our veterans and thanking them for their service to our great country. Uh, and uh, just uh, so appreciative of those who have sacrificed so much. They've given of their, of their lives so that we may have the freedoms that we have. And we want to recognize those uh, who have served our country. Obviously, I, I want to encourage you along these lines as well. Make sure you get out and vote on Tuesday, November 3rd. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, also, uh, that Sunday, Sunday, November 8th, uh, the misprint the bulletin there, Sunday, November 8th, there'll be a business meeting following that evening service there, so please keep that in mind. Uh, then I want to encourage you also to continue to pray for uh, Phil Townley, uh, and uh, he needs, needs your prayers, and uh, if you can be encouraged, send a card if you can, uh, give a phone call, and just be a blessing to them. Uh, so today, uh, Junior Church is going to be in here today, uh, as Paul is uh, helping with her dad here this morning. So Junior Church will be in here this morning, and I'm excited about that. Before our men come, I do want to also thank all of you for your efforts yesterday. Uh, and uh, from my understanding, there's a good group of people here yesterday helping with uh, cleanup and maintenance on the building. So thank you so much uh, for being here for that work today. I'm sorry that, uh, that I was out. Uh, I was at an ordination service. Uh, and uh, so I apologize that I was not here to work. I wasn't just trying to get out of work, okay? Uh, I, know, I know the thought, oh, schedule us to work, and then you leave. I see how it is. That wasn't the plan, and so, but I do want to thank you for that. I had a great time of fellowship over at uh, the ordination service, and just uh, a young man who loves the Lord uh, and knows his Bible, and uh, he said he'd do a great job. He's in Whittemore, uh, Whittemore Baptist Church there. He was ordained yesterday. And uh, I was able to privilege to be on the ordination council and then be a part of the service as well. So I'm excited about the ministry, ministry there. So thank you for your prayers for me yesterday as well. Thank you for your work uh, here. I'm going to ask our men if they would to come. We'll receive our offering this morning. Uh, and once again, you give us the Lord has blessed you. If you're a guest with us today, uh, be sure and place uh, the connection card in the offering plate when it comes by. I'm going to ask Jerry if you would to ask the Lord's blessing on our offering. 
Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for this wonderful day you have given us. We thank you for the love and the grace that you pour more abundantly upon us each day. All we have to do but look and listen. Lord, we thank you for this time when we can get back to you, that your word would go from this place forth. Others may hear of the news. Lord, we just, we're ever so grateful for you, and we'll give you the praise therein. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. chapter 7, verse number 14, we'll read together. And so in verse number 14, let's begin. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin. So much to live in this great country, to benefit from the many freedoms that we have. God, I pray that you would continue to bless this country. That, God, you would extend your hand of grace and mercy and love to the people of the United States of America. And as we've read this morning about your people, that if my people, you say, who are, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. God, I pray that as Christians today, 
that that would be a prayer that we could cling to. And that that would be our desire for this great country that we live in. Bless the preaching of your word in just a few moments. Also, as we worship you in song once again, I pray that you bless this song as we sing. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing. Turn in your hymn books to hymn 463. I'm sorry, 466. Let's sing together. Mighty Fortress is our God. Number 466. Begin here this morning looking into the Word of God. I want to just encourage you that over the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at uh, really uh, what our responsibility is as Christians uh, in regards to uh, our country, America, and how blessed we are with the freedoms that we have. And so we're going to kind of have, if you will, a couple of uh, patriotic type themed messages here over the next several Sundays, and, and I want to encourage you to, as I already have, uh, uh, Tuesday, uh, November 3rd, uh, need to get out and you need to, uh, to, to use the freedom that you have to vote, uh, and uh, I'm encouraging you to vote uh, along with uh, biblical guidelines, and, uh, and we'll be looking uh, a little bit more uh, deeply into that next Sunday, but uh, I don't know about you. 
But I am a, I am a huge fan of the United States of America. Amen. Uh, I love this country so much that uh, I was born a couple weeks early. I had to be, be born on July 4th. I mean, that's, I mean, uh, nine months in the womb, and I was that pumped about uh, about living in the United States of America already. Today. I've got to do it. Uh, and I just, I just, I love uh, our country. I'm so thankful. And man, aren't we blessed Amen. to be an American? Yeah. Uh, and there's a reason why uh, so many people want to come to America. Yeah. There's a reason why. It's because it's, it's the, the freest nation on the face of the earth. And we've been blessed by God in so many, so many ways. As we look at 2 Chronicles chapter 7, uh, and specifically this morning at verse number 14, I want to encourage you along these lines. What is our res the responsibility of God's people? Uh, and, uh, and, and that applies to us today. What is our responsibility uh, as God's people uh, in this world that we live in and in this country that we live in and that we say that we love so much? So we're going to look at what our responsibility is as God's people uh, to uh, the country that we uh, live in this morning. As we look around our nation today, we see the the fact that God has been pulled out of many facets of our lives. We know, and, it's, uh, uh, and that if you've uh, learned from uh, uh, American history or if you've studied American history in high school, uh, we, we've learned that, uh, that uh, God uh, was at the founders, uh, was in, in the founders' hearts and their desire was to uh, found this country on God and on the Bible. But we know in recent years how that the Bible has been taken out of so many areas. We find that prayer has been taken out of schools. We know that unfortunately even in our church houses, God has been taken out of our church houses in many cases. We find that the Bible has been, been taken out of the schoolhouse. But isn't it interesting that uh, Bibles are encouraged in prison? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we maybe got that turned around and we, uh, we got the young people and got them grounded in the word of God as a young person, maybe they wouldn't need it in prison because they wouldn't need to be there. Amen. But we've got to go backwards. We've, uh, in recent years, we've uh, tried to take Christ out of Christmas. Without Jesus, there is no Christmas. That's Amen. Right. We've, we, we've taken Jesus out of, out of everything. And, uh, and even uh, recent battles and, uh, in recent years, the, taking the Ten Commandments out of our courthouses. Yeah. I mean, imagine. I don't know how offensive it is, but thou shalt not kill. How offensive is that? I mean, that's just one of them. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, and the, the reason why it's offensive is because the, the, in the Ten Commandments, you, you have the command, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. And as Americans, man, we have got so many gods in our society today, in our culture today. We have athletes, our gods in our country. The almighty American dollar is a god in our country today. And, and, and the list goes up. And we wake up here in 2020, and we find uh, uh, the political atmosphere that we're in. We see on the, on the news how individuals are, are rioting and looting in the streets and uh, and I, I don't have a problem with protesting, but when you're harming other individuals, you cross the line. That's right. When you harm other people and destroy people's property, you cross the line in protest. And we see the, the lawlessness in our country today. Not to mention we see the, the lack of respect and love of even life itself. How has America slipped so far morally? It's because 
we've left, as we just sang, a mighty fortress is our God, we've left God out of the equation. And it drives us to uh, where we're at today. And as we look into the scriptures today, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14, and, and God here is uh, speaking to Solomon about the children of Israel. And he's really giving to Solomon the, the keys to having a successful country are found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14. And today, if it, I, I believe that the principles would hold true for, for us today that, that if my people, well, who is the my people? The my people, I, I hope uh, uh, and, and pray that the my people in, uh, in, in, in God's terms here would be everybody in this room at the very least. How do you become a, a person of God? How do you become uh, God's people? Or we could say, uh, how, do we, how are we on God's side? It's simple. Do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? Amen. If there's been a time in your life when you recognize the fact that you're a sinner, Romans, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you recognize that fact that you're a sinner and, and, and you understand the fact that Romans continues and tells us for the wages of that sin is death. Yeah. Hey, there's consequences to our sin. Romans continues and says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we don't have to suffer the eternal consequences of our sin, but rather we can experience the gift that, that Jesus offers to all of mankind. And for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. The choir sang a song that put it this way. I'm adopted. Mm -hmm. I'm a child of the King. The moment you trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you've been adopted into the family of God, and you are His, one of His people. Mm -hmm. And so as we consider 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14, if my people, uh, and uh, I know this is a, a, was to Israel, but the principles are so true for us today. If my people, look with me first of all, uh, which are called by my name, that means the name of Jesus. If my people, which are called by my name, what's that first thing there? Shall humble themselves. Mm -hmm. What is the responsibility of the believer today in 2020? Humility. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. One of the most difficult things for any individual to do is to be humble. Because who, who do we look out for the most? Me. And, and who do we like to, to hear good things said about? Me. I, I love it when my wife says, oh, you're so handsome. <laughs> I love it. She doesn't say it often. No, I'm just kidding. But I love it when she says it. Or when she lies and she says you're so strong. <laughs> I know the truth, okay? I'm a weakling. I know it. But, but I love to hear uh, uh, my wife build me up and, uh, oh, great job. You did a good job on that. It only took me 20 times, but, hey, I did a good job on it. And I, we love the, uh, those words of affirmation. We, we love to be built up. And, uh, and if we're not careful, we say we can begin to believe all of that. Hey, I, yeah. you know what, honey? I am pretty strong. <laughs> Just don't ask me to go lift any weights, okay? And uh, we can allow that pride to come into our life. And, uh, and, and I think as, a, as Americans, uh, in our country as a whole, uh, we bought into this lie that we are all that and a bag of chips. You know, the reason or what made America so great is what we were founded upon. That's right. The truth of God's word. And God has blessed because we have uh, we uh, 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 have remained faithful to the Word of God, and uh, and, uh, uh, and and God has blessed our country because of it. 
And we see the chaos in our, in our streets today and on the news, and that's a direct result of us uh, falling away from the Lord. Amen. And thinking that, hey, we've got this, we can handle it. I don't know if you watch any of the, any of the debates, any of the uh, commercials that you see. Uh, you, we always hear this, I, 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 I am going to do this for you, and this for you, and this for you, and this for you. But honestly, how many times has a politician said, I'm going to do this for you, and actually done it? Once. I mean, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, and uh, they say, hey, vote for me, and, uh, and everything's going to be all great, and, and look at me, and look at what we've done, and, uh, and, and we see God being taken out of everything, and, and, and Americans, we've become so prideful, hey, I can do this on my own, we don't need God anymore, we don't need God in the school, we don't need uh, God in the courthouses, we don't need God in our government, and, and for probably 70, almost 100 years as Christians, we took a step back from being involved in government, yeah. and you look at what's happened our culture, to our society. Life is cheap. Babies are just thrown into a trash can. That's what we've come to. So as Christians, we must come to the Lord and humble ourselves, recognizing, hey, we can't do this on our own. We need God. We recognize that as salvation, hey, we need a Savior, but you know we need God to we must humble ourselves. James chapter 4 and verse number 6 tells us, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth more grace unto the humble. Turn with me to 2 Timothy uh, chapter number 3 as we uh, consider humility and consider pride. 2 Timothy chapter uh, number 3, we read in verse number 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 uh, and verse number 1. Where the Bible tells us uh, in verse 1 of 2 Timothy 3, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. <clears throat> and look at what is a, the sign of these perilous times. When you think of perilous times, then we think of uh, uh, comets that are going to be uh, coming to the earth and destroying the earth and uh, volcanoes and earthquakes. And that's certainly true. But look what is listed here, a sign of these perilous times. Verse number two, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. It's uh, interesting, after the finals, I didn't watch any of the NBA finals, and, uh, but I heard uh, interviews of some of the players. And, there, and uh, one particular player, he's all concerned about his legacy. Man, I, I hope I start getting some respect. Well, let me tell you, if you've got to ask people for respect, you don't have it. <laughs> respect is something that is, that is earned. Yeah. You, don't just, you don't just, hey, I deserve my respect. Well, that just means I don't respect you more. I, I respect you less now. Men should be lovers of, them all, of their own selves. Look at next. It says, uh, covetous, boasters, proud, and all those dealing with with pride there. A sign that perilous times are, uh, are coming. Pride. Pride. And what is Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14? If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. We continue looking at the, this list here. It says blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Wow, that's a that's a sign of, of perilous times. They're disobedient to parents. How about this one? Unthankful. Unthankful. Uh, unholy. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, <coughs> traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Wow. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. It's like I've got, and Todd makes fun of me, I've got these battery powered tools. Okay? And they do the job. Okay, Todd, they do the job. But you know what happens to batteries sometimes? They die. 
doesn't mean that the tool doesn't work. The tool's still there, but there's no power. I think that's a lot like Christians today. Hey, we've got a form of godliness, but we deny the power there. We deny the power there. And all of these are, are signs of, uh, of the perilous times and the end times that are coming. And, uh, and, and uh, Paul is writing Timothy and, and enlisting all of these things. And then he challenges Timothy in verse number 14. He says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing from what thou hast learned them. Paul, the Apostle Paul says, here's perilous times, a sign that you're living in perilous times. And then he challenges Timothy to continue. We see that the prideful are, are rejected by uh, the Lord. James tells us, but he giveth more grace uh, to the humble. Uh, go with me to Philippians chapter number 2. Philippians chapter number 2. And if you would, look with me down at verse number 5. Philippians chapter 2 and, and verse number 5. Where the Bible tells us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We see in verse number 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What, the, what type of mind is that? It's a mind of humility. Jesus, God, humbled himself and took on flesh. The creator became the creation. And then he, he allowed the creation to abuse him and take his life. But I will tell you this, just as much as Jesus is God, uh, is, was man, he's also God. Yeah. And unlike any other human being that has ever lived, Jesus died, uh, and the, but he did not stay dead. That's right. He rose from the dead. And there's no other human being that in and of themselves, without the power of God, has raised themselves from the dead. But Jesus did. Because he was 100% man. Mm. He's God in the flesh. And we find here uh, his humility. We're to be like-minded with Jesus Christ and his humility. And look with me at verse number 9 where, as we continue. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Before we move on, let me say this. Every tongue, we'll say every person that has ever lived is going to bow and recognize that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every person. Here's the thing. You better do it now. Before it's too late. Every person is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. Will it be while you're living here or will it be at the judgment? Right before God casts those in the lake of fire. Because they died without trusting Christ as their personal Savior. Everybody's going to confess it. Every time, verse 11 tells us, should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God and Father. My prayer for you today if we're, uh, is to humble yourself first of all. And if you don't know Christ as your Savior, recognize you can't do this on your own. You need a Savior. You can't overcome uh, your sin nature. You, you're not going to be able to do enough good things to outweigh your bad uh, to get you into heaven. It's just not possible. The Bible tells us, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You need to trust in Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross for your salvation. There's coming a day when everybody will stand before God. Everybody's going to stand at one of God's two judgments. Will you be at the judgment with a believer? 
or with those who have rejected God. Humble yourself today. Trust Christ as your personal Savior. As you go back to 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, we see this humility for the people of God. It says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Pray. Recognizing, Christian, that we need God. If we pray. You know, what's important about prayer, just a couple of things just quickly here, is that, that if we pray, and a prayer is commanded in the scriptures. It's commanded. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 2 says that continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. We find other scriptures that tell us to pray without ceasing. Luke chapter 21 and uh, verse number 36, uh, Jesus is saying, watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. Prayer is commanded. Hey, quick, quick thought. As we think about our country and what we find ourselves in and, and the taking God out of different facets of our country, I wonder how much have you prayed for the United States of America? How much have you prayed, not just for this president, but the other presidents of your lifetime? How much have you prayed for our government leadership? Well, let me just throw this out there, put it maybe on a more personal level. How about your family? You know, the greatness of, of America is founded upon God and it's built in, in the home, in the, in the family unit. And it branches out from there into, into communities and into governments. If the success of America rests on how much you pray for her, would America be a success? We must commit to humbling ourselves and praying for this country. If we humble ourselves and pray. Prayer is, is commanded, but prayer is also necessary. In John chapter 15 and verse number 5, the Bible tells us, or Jesus tells us, is telling his disciples, he says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And then get this final statement in this verse. For without me, ye can do nothing. All that we have, we owe to the Lord. For without him, we can do nothing. The breath that we just took is a gift from God. Probably not one of us in here this morning has thought about your heart beating. Every heart <coughs> is a gift from God. Yes. Without Him, we can do nothing. Didn't even have to think about those things. And then you throw, a, uh, throw in a few more things and, uh, uh, about your life and about the, uh, where we live and, and everything, all the blessing that, that America has received and, and you have received as, as, a, as a family, as an individual, comes from the Lord. I like, a, I like a, how, I think it's the psalmist that says, he daily loadeth us with benefits. Yeah. Daily Loaded us with benefits. My wife, sometimes I think she was at uh, uh, across the street here. There's a thrift store or something. I don't, I don't go in those places. It drives me crazy. But she goes in. And I think they had, uh, they had a deal. Uh, and Aaliyah, you can probably correct me if I'm wrong. You can load up a bag for, of clothes for was it five bucks, something like that, a dollar. I don't know. You can load it up. Now I'll give this, I'll give props to my wife. She can load it up those bags. <laughs> and I'm telling you, she packs those things so full. She you can't, you know, she rolls them up into tight little balls and stuffs them in there, rolls them up, stuffs them all in there. So that she's getting all that she can uh, out of out of that one bag of clothing. She loads it up the best that she can. I think about uh, 
uh, and, and I've missed this with the, with the, the, the pandemic and all we find ourselves in. I love going to buffets. And man, I've been struggling not being able to go to like the China buffet, the Ponderosa. Man, it's been such a bummer. Man, I go, we go there, and man, we are loading those plates. Loading it, and load them up good and often. Often. God daily loaded us with their things. Man, to think about it, you can't comprehend about how much God has blessed us if we would pray. I want you to notice, thirdly, as we consider this verse, it says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. But before we do that, turn with me. I just want to show you something just quickly here. Verse Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, as we consider prayer. 1 Timothy 2, in verse number 1, the Bible says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And then get this, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Yeah. We're to be in prayer for all men, for kings, for all those in authority. And why is it that we need to pray for our leadership? Man, so we can live a quiet and peaceable life. And isn't, isn't that what we want? Isn't that what we, uh, as, as Americans, we've been blessed to live just peaceably? It's because it's the result of the prayers of God's people. We want to live peaceably with all men. How much are you praying for our leadership? You know, I pray a couple of ways. Every day I, I pray for the salvation of those that are in leadership. Yeah. Because you know what? What, what, our, what America needs, what our leadership needs, isn't more government programs, isn't more money. They need Jesus Christ. That's right. That's what they need. And so I pray for the salvation of, a, of our leadership and those that are in our government. I pray for them to trust Christ as their Savior. And then I pray for wisdom for them. Man, they need wisdom. And pray that they would surround, the, uh, surround themselves with godly people. I, I'm thankful for our wonderful Vice President, uh, for, uh, Vice President Pence. And just the influence that he's uh, that he's been on uh, on President Trump and uh, Vice President Pence is a uh, a godly man who loves the Lord. And uh, another individual I think of just pops in my mind, Dr. Ben Carson, tremendous Christian and believer, and, uh, and he's had a, I believe an influence on, on our president as well. And and we need to pray that he continues to surround himself with godly individuals. And you know what? Whoever our president is on November 4th, that we would remain faithful and praying for their salvation, for, uh, for wisdom for them, and that they would surround themselves with godly people. That's what we should be praying for our leadership, whether we agree with them or not. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. And that verse continues. It says, and pray and seek my face. Yeah. Seek my face. Let me just be honest with you. Well, let me ask you a question. Is the world seeking God's face? No. no. Is the unsaved seeking God's face? No. So who are we talking about? Remember if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and see my face. Yeah. Just a, something for you to think about and answer this question in your heart. How much are you seeking the Lord? Hebrews tells us that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And you know, as a whole, America, we're not seeking his face. But I would say that as a church, we're probably not seeking the Lord's face the way that we should. 
You know what? Oftentimes, Jesus is an afterthought. My service to God is an afterthought. My testimony for God is an afterthought. My, my witness for Jesus is an afterthought. But rather, it should be at the forefront of our life. Amen. Remember what we said. Without him, we can do nothing. We need him. And so let's, uh, our relationship with the Lord shouldn't be an afterthought. It should be the primary thought. It says, and seek my face. Are you seeking the Lord today? And you might say, hey, I'm, I'm in church. Does that prove anything? Well, I'm glad you're here. We're not to be forsaken the assembly of ourselves together. That's good. But you know what? If you were to come here a couple months ago, well, maybe even now, you know, there's, there's the occasional spider that's here as well. The occasional fly is here as well. Guess what? The, the, the devils believe in Jesus. The devils believe in God. But are you seeking the Lord? The challenge is to seek the Lord daily. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse number 2 says, uh, Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask to be the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Yet they seek me daily is how that verse starts. Do you seek the Lord daily? You know, when I find myself seeking the Lord, when I can't figure it out myself. Man, when things get really tough, then I'll seek the Lord. The challenge is for us to seek Him daily. Recognizing I need him daily. But also, we're to seek him not just daily, but we're to seek him boldly. Boldly. Hebrews 4 and verse 16 tells us, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We're to come to the Lord humbly and boldly at the same time. Why can we come to God boldly? Because God wants to hear from us. He loves us. He wants to hear from us. The most neglected, uh, we'll say tool that we have as Christians, the most neglected tool we have is prayer. We don't spend the time in prayer like we should, like we've got a relationship with a, an almighty creator, an all-powerful God. I can tell you this, if you, had, if you had the president's phone number, and you could call him anytime you wanted, and you could just talk about it with whatever you want, and you say, hey, I think we should do this, and, he, and, and, he'll, and he'll say, oh, hey, I'll, I'll check into it. If you had his number on your phone, and you could call it right now, you would be talking to him every day. Then it's got a phone president of the United States, you wouldn't believe The actual name of the I told him what we needed. I told him how, how life's kind of been difficult for me. I told him exactly what I needed. Man, we'd be, oh man, I, I gotta go talk to him. Who put the president in the position that he is? God did. God did. Who is a blessed America the way that it's been blessed? God did. Who's blessed your family? God has. And so we're to come boldly to the, to the throne of grace because we know our God is almighty. He's all-powerful. He's the one and only true God. Therefore, we can come boldly because he wants to talk with us. He wants to answer our prayers. But you know, if we don't ever come to him, what good is it? What good is it? So we continue. My people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Look at this lastly here and turn from their wicked ways. The fourth responsibility of the people of God is to turn from our wicked ways. If we humble ourselves, if we pray, if we seek his face, we turn from our wicked ways. Sadly, in many realms, and, uh, and, and you've got to take inventory of your own heart. But there's very, in, in many Christians today, in many churches today, there's very little difference between 
child of God in the world in how we live and how we talk and the attitudes we have and, and the list goes on up there. The challenge for us is not to become more like the world but to become more like Christ. Amen. We're, not, we're not to be changed into the, the, into the world's image. We're not to conform to the world but we're to be changed into Jesus' image. We're to be transformed. Turn from our wicked way. Psalm 66, you don't have to turn there, but Psalm 66, verse number 18 tells us, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not hear me if I regard iniquity in my heart. That tells me, hey, hey, there's supposed to be something different about me. We find that the Christian is a peculiar person. How do we turn from our wicked ways? Just two thoughts and we're done. First is this. Repent. Repent. First John chapter 1 and verse number 9 says, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As Christians, I'm just going to put it bluntly, as Christians, we should know better. Because we know the Word of God. Parents, did you ever say this to your kids? You should know better than to Ever say that? I wonder how many times God in heaven is kind of sitting there on his throne with his head in his hands saying, man, they should just know better. How many times? If we confess our sin, he's faithful just to forgive us our sins. And he cleanses from all unrighteousness. That word repentance is, is, is making a dramatic change. It's a, it's a turning around. Means, hey, we're no longer uh, walking towards the world and, uh, and involved in our sin, but rather we're, we've repented of it and we're turned around and we're walking away from it, never to touch it again. That's repentance. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. What's the answer to America? It's Jesus. It's Jesus in the heart of the believer. And I can tell you this, if the Christian isn't going to turn from their wicked ways, America's not. The unsaved, uh, they don't know any better. The Christian knows better. Repent. And then forsake, as we've kind of already mentioned. We're to repent and turn from our sin and then forsake it. Not to return to it. Remember what Proverbs says about the dog? Kind of gross, disgusting. If you've seen it, even more gross. A dog returns to its to its vomit. That's basically what we are if we return to our sin. Just like that dog returning to its vomit. Man, I remember, I probably shouldn't even tell the story. But years ago, uh, I had a big dog that, that I was given. His name was Goliath. And uh, he would he, he he was huge, uh, and he would uh, uh, he'd have a bowl that big, that big for food, and he would eat that thing. He'd pour the pour the dog food in. He'd eat the whole thing. This is one time, or well, I don't know what it was, but this one particular time I remember, where he either ate too fast, wasn't feeling good. I don't know what it was, but he vomited. All of that food back up. And we're sitting there, we're like, oh, that's so disgusting. I mean, right on the carpet. Oh, bad. It was so gross. Oh, it's disgusting. And, oh, it smells so bad. And oh, get away. And, and, and we're like, Mom, look at this down there. Mom, Dad, look at this. And uh, somebody's got to clean this up. You know who was the willing volunteer? The dog. <laughs> We're trying to hold the dog in. No, oh, that's disgusting. Oh, that's so gross. That should be sin for the believer. Sin's disgusting. It's gross. It stinks. And we're to repent from it, turn from our wicked ways, and then forsake it. First Corinthians tells us this in chapter 15 and verse number 34. It says, Awake to righteousness. And sin not. For some have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. 
Awake to righteousness and sin not. And we're to turn from our wicked ways and live the life that God has for us. The problem is, as human beings, we're drawn to the world. That's why we've got to daily seek the Lord's face. That's why we boldly got to come to the throne of grace. Because, man, the world's pull is great. That's why uh, we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together because uh, the world's pull is great and we need to be around God's people in God's house because the world's pull is great. And the only way we're going to live a successful Christian life is, is staying right with the Lord. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. What's the responsibility of the Christian in 2020? To be humble, to pray, to seek the Lord's face and turn from our wicked ways. If you're here this morning, there's never been a time in your life you've trusted Christ as your Savior. I would ask you, humble yourself. Recognize the fact that you need a Savior. Christian today, let's humble ourselves and draw close to the Lord. Recognize that we need Him each and every day. Hey, what's the answer for America's problem? It's not November 3rd. It's Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful day you've given to us. We're thankful for this beautiful place in which we can worship you freely without fear of government influ uh, government coming in. And, and we're so thankful for the freedoms that we have. God, we're here this morning. We recognize the fact that as a, as a nation, we've turned our back on you. We've taken you out of different areas of our, of our lives and of our country. God, it is my prayer that for myself and for your people in 2020, that your people would humble themselves. That your people would pray. That your people would seek your face like never before. And that, God, your people would turn from their wicked ways. God, that's our responsibility. God, help us to have the courage and boldness to do it. It is also my prayer, God, that if there's one here today that has never humbled themselves and trusted you as their personal Savior, that today they come to trust you. God, I pray that you'd work in our hearts, even in these last few moments of our time together this morning. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to ask maybe two questions this morning. If you're here today and, and you would say, Pastor, I call myself a Christian. I've trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. There's no doubt in my mind that if Jesus were to come back today, that I would be in heaven with him for eternity. If you could say that with 100% confidence, I'm going to ask you with no one looking around, to just lift your hand so that I can see. I, I won't point you out and say, hey, I know for sure where I'm going to spend an eternity. Thank you. See those hands. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you who just raised your hand, I wonder if you'd do something with me this morning. I wonder if you would commit with me Say, Pastor, over the next nine days leading up to the election here, November 3rd, if you would commit with me and say, Pastor, I'm going to humble myself like never before. I'm going to pray like never before for our country. I'm going to seek the Lord's face like never before over this next week and a half. And Lord willing, I'm going to, if there is sin in my life, I'm going to turn from my wicked way like never before. Because I want the Lord to bless me. 
I want the Lord to bless this country. I want the Lord to stay his hand of judgment and extend his hand of mercy and grace. Over the next week and a half, I wonder how many Christians with an upraised hand would say, that's what I'm going to do. Like never before, I'm going to humble myself, pray, seek God's faith, and turn from my ways. Can I see your hands just quickly? I just want to pray for you. And you pray with me. My hand's up. Thank you. See those hands. Let's remain faithful in that commitment. Just one more question. If you're here this morning, you'd say, Pastor, there's never been a time in my life where I trusted Jesus as my Savior, but I would like to today. Can I see your hand just quickly? I just want to pray for you. Say, hey, I've never trusted him, but I want to trust him. See that hand back there. Anybody else? See that hand there. Hey, I don't know Jesus, but I don't want to. Thank you. I'll pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, thankful for the commitment of your people. Thankful for these two uh, young boys who've raised their hand for salvation. God, I pray that you do a work in their, in their hearts and in their life. Pray now that you bless now this time of commitment, this time of invitation. In Jesus' name. Would you stand with me with every head bowed and your eye closed? I'm going to ask Ruth to begin playing. If you're, if you're here and are willing to commit yourself to the Lord for the next week and a half, to humble yourself, to pray, to seek His face, to turn from your wicked ways like never before, I want to encourage you, hey, let's start that now. And as Ruth is playing, hey, why don't you come and let's commit ourselves to the Lord this morning. Let's begin praying even now for our country, for our nation, uh, for your, yourself individually. I encourage you to come uh, on this verse. If you raise your hand for salvation and you want to trust Christ as your Savior, hey, you come and I'll have somebody take the Bible and show you how you can know for sure where you spend an eternity. You come at this time. Maybe the Lord's working your heart in the area of baptism. We didn't talk about baptism this morning. But you recognize, hey, you need to be, you need to be following the Lord of believers' baptism. Follow that first step of obedience. Hey, you come, we'll show, show you the proper steps to take in order to be baptized. We're going to have one more verse. You come as the Lord's word in your heart. that we would humble ourselves, that we would pray, that we would seek your face. And God, if there be any wicked way in us, God, that we would turn from our wicked ways. We find your word tells us in the second half of that verse, and then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. God, we pray for healing for our land. We pray that you would forgive our sin. And God, we pray that you would hear the prayers of your people on behalf of this wonderful nation that we live in. God, I pray that you bless us as we're dismissed in just a few moments. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you once again so much for, for being here. I want to encourage you to be back tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll kind of have a second part to this message here, uh, looking at the second part of this verse this evening. And so if you can make it back, be sure to be, be here. Uh, don't forget choir practice tonight uh, at 5.15. Are you starting with the, the play practice at...
Uh, five that starts next week. Next week, okay. So those of you who are involved in the Christmas program, young people be meeting here at five o'clock uh, next week. If you're here early this week, we're recruiting you for the choir. So uh, <laughs> you need to be sure to be in your place uh, then. Also want to uh, uh, remind you about The Rock um, at six o'clock on a Wednesday and then the trunk or tree. Be sure to check out the sign-up sheet back there. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you so much for faithful to, faithfulness to the Lord's house. And let's, uh, let's get out. Let's pray like never before. Let's humble ourselves like never before. Let's seek the Lord's face like never before. And let's turn from our wicked ways. And we'll watch the blessings come. Uh, so, Lord bless you. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. And, and hopefully, Lord willing, we'll see you tonight. I'm going to ask Lee if he would to close our service this morning. You are with thank you so much for loving us enough to send your son to die on the cross for our sins. For saving us from our unrighteousness and for, for being there for us in prayer. I just pray that you'd help us to be a people of prayer and that we might uh, seek your face and that we might do our best to tell others about you and that we might devote ourselves to praying for our country.